Welcome to the Market Board, everybody. My name is Dave, and today I've got another good one for you. We're doing an update on Kratos Defense and Security stock ticker KTOS. Now, if you missed video number one, what you did miss was company history, management bios, products and services, competition, SWOT analysis, institutional ownership, and a whole lot of more stuff, honestly. I'm going to leave a link down below so that you can catch up because I'm only going to cover new stuff today. First, let's discuss their August 18th press release regarding their open space quantum products. Announced that in the second quarter of 2021, Kratos delivered products supporting the satellite industry's movement towards dynamic virtualized ground systems to 23 customers around the globe. These included products in Kratos' quantum and spectral net lines, both part of its open space family of dynamic virtual ground solutions. In my last video, I had spent a big portion of time detailing their unmanned aerial systems to outline a number of their advantages, which became very clear when we take a look at the MDNA section, but let's just slow things down for one moment because I don't want you getting too excited too early. But today, let's start by very briefly covering two additional product lines starting with Open Space Quantum. Kratos' Open Space Quantum products offer software versions of satellite ground system components which traditionally have been implemented as hardware, such as modems or front-end processors, and they need to communicate with satellite or its payload. Kratos' Open Space Quantum products have been supporting satellite operators around the globe in tens of thousands of satellite passes per month. Now the other product line we're going to briefly take a look at is their open space spectral net which allows for products providing the on-ramp to modern virtual ground operations by reliably digitizing the radio frequency signal from a satellite into the internet protocol format that can then be processed by digital systems running in the cloud both on-premise and in hybrid environments. Now Kratos announced that the sale of Quantum in Spectral Net products in quarter two included international commercial customers as well as support for key U.S. defense and intelligent program and in government projects for other nations. Seven new customers bought products in the open space family in quarter two as well as 16 returning customers purchasing additional Quantum and Spectral Net units. CEO Eric DeMarco released a statement in August saying, quote, in Kratos' space and satellite business, our new software-based approach with open space and virtualized products are experiencing significant customer penetration and acceptance, including record bookings with approximately 30 customers year to date. We are forecasting an extremely strong second half of 2021 for this business, most notably for the fourth quarter, including significant margin expansion with this growth trajectory expected to further accelerate into 2022. Now, obviously, this is very exciting news for shareholders as DeMarco & Co. continue to look for organic ways to increase revenue in periods when compared to the prior year. Now that we are armed with a little bit more information regarding Kratos, I say it's now time to transition to my favorite part, the exciting part, the MDNA that is management's discussion and analysis of recent financial performance, something you can find in pretty much every 10K or 10Q form. Starting with revenues, Kratos increased to $205 million, which was an increase of about 20% as compared to revenues of $170 million in the second quarter of 2020, reflecting an organic growth in Kratos' unmanned systems, space, satellite, cyber rocket, support systems, and microwave electronics businesses, but was partially offset by certain reductions, including their training solutions business, resulting primarily from a previously disclosed reduction in scope of certain international contracts. Revenue grew organically 12.3% in the second quarter of 2021 as compared to the second quarter of 2020, excluding the impact of ASC Signal, TDI, and 5D acquisitions, which contributed approximately $13.8 million as well. 
the company has approximately $280 million of net operating loss carry forwards which are expected to substantially shield Kratos from paying future cash income taxes. For the second quarter of 2021, Kratos' unmanned system segment, the KUS revenue, had increased to $60.3 million, which was an increase of 43% as compared to just $42 million the year prior, and this is an area where we focused our first video on for having exceptional growth potential. For the second quarter of 2021, Kratos' government solution segment, KGS, reported revenues of $144 million, an increase of 12.8% as compared to revenues of $128 million in the second quarter of 2020, and an operating income of $5.9 million, which was down from an operating income of $7.7 .7 million in the year prior, primarily reflecting a less favorable revenue mix. Kratos' space satellite and cyber business generated revenues of $67.4 million in the second quarter of 2021, which was also an increase of 35.9% over the second quarter of 2020. Cash on hand for the period as of June 27, 2021 was $369 million. However, it would not be a fair assessment to not at least warn you of a few of the risk factors, including that Kratos believes that continued budget pressures, CRAs, or even a federal government shutdown would have a serious negative consequence. Additionally, funding for certain programs in which they currently participate may be reduced, delayed, or even altogether canceled, and budget uncertainty or funding cuts globally could adversely affect the viability, and finally, the nature of their operations do expose them to risks associated with pandemics, epidemics, and other public health emergencies like that of COVID-19. However, let's take a quick breather and a quick detour at that to kindly remind you folks to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and to comment down below because every click counts. But now, without pestering you too much, let's move on to the updated institutional ownership holdings for Kratos according to CNN Business. The top holder would appear to be the Vanguard Group with about a 9% equity stake. Moving on, you have BlackRock at number two with about 7%. ARK Investment Management also has about 7%, State Street has about 3.8%, and finally Capital Research and Management rounds out the top 5 with about 3% total ownership as well, resulting in a total institutional ownership value approximately about 88%. But now we get to the part that I know everyone here has been waiting for, and it's my take and my position. Now in the previous video about Kratos, I had stated that Kratos had been added to my watch list, but that I was waiting for a better price point before I would open a position. My thesis with Kratos, and really any stock at any time, is simply this. I'm neither looking at the all-time high, nor am I looking at an all-time low. So conversely, in the future, I will likely be able to both purchase it cheaper and sell it for more at different dates. With the recent drop down to almost $21 a share, and at the time of the recording, it's about 22 and a half, I think it's a fairly reasonable price and makes for a good addition to a portfolio. Now, something worth mentioning, in my opinion, is that Kratos trades slightly higher than peers in terms of both price to sales and price to earnings, but the returns on the stock continue to pile in regardless, with over a 20% return year over year and over 250% over the past five years. Now, in my opinion, there are two major reasons for their continued growth. One, Kratos is a disruptor, just like Kathy Wood and her company claim them to be. Number two, they post impressive gross margins. In fact, they have better gross margins than Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, and Northrop Grumman, though I will note that they do come up short of L3 Harris, who, by the way, to reiterate, L3 Harris is notable, especially with Kratos, as they previously had acquired the Titan Corporation, where Eric DeMarco, the CEO of Kratos currently, was the then COO and president of Titan. Titan, during his tenure, had grown from approximately $150 million in annualized revenue to about $1.5 billion with a backlog of over $4 billion. While I am not suggesting they will be acquired, I am simply suggesting that previously, Eric DeMarco's company had been acquired literally by that exact company. I'm not entirely decided on whether I'm going to go for a long stock position or an option swing type play. 
But what I do know is that I have been right about previous direction, which has resulted in a much more affordable price point. The question for me becomes, will I continue to be right about direction? And only time is gonna answer that question for us. But guys, it's just one final reminder to everyone. I am an individual investor, but I am not a financial advisor. This definitely should not be considered financial advice. All opinions expressed are my own are subject to change during mood swings. My name is Dave, and this has been The Market Board.